Hey, it's Will. I've got a second video for you here on the Rack AFX 7 plugin project we're working on. These are really basic tutorial videos, and in the last video we added a volume knob to our Hello Volume project here. So there's my volume knob. It's the Ableton Blue color, and we set the taper to be anti-log so that it would match the same kind of uh, a log taper potentiometer where you would get an analog. For the second slot here, I'm going to put a mute switch in. When we right click on that, we have several options. I'm going to choose the two state switch for the mute switch and say OK. The name for it is going to be mute. And it's a string list variable. There is no other option for this one. And the variable name is going to be enable mute, like that. So I've got enable mute. You can see that the, the string list is switch off, comma, switch on. Switch off is the value 0, switch on is the value 1 when we go to, ev to evaluate that later. You can set the default to either on or off here. You can also set the default to on or off right here. I'm going to be using the big red green button here. I've got four graphics for you to choose from and I'll try to add more of those as time goes on. So I'm going to use the big red green button, call it enable mute and say OK. So there's the button and I'm going to open the compiler, go to the .h file and you can see that this vi variable here has been written, enable mute. That's the, that's the value that I specified, or the name of the variable that I specified. And it is an int. And it will evaluate to be either switch off, which is 0, or switch on, which is 1. In a uh, strongly typed enum, the underlying data type is an int. So we can compare this enable mute to one of these two values. So that's kind of how it works. For an on-off switch, it's easy. It's just 0 or 1, so we don't really have a lot of de decoding to do there. Let's go over to the process audio frame function, which is right here. In the last video, I created a final volume variable and set it equal to the knob control. And now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the mute to that. So what we will say is if enable mute equals 1. Now I'm being very verbose here. Part of that reason is enable mute is not a Boolean value. It's actually an integer value. So I'm kind of being sort of legal here with the way that I'm doing this if statement. So if mute is turned on, what we'll do is we'll take final volume and just shut it off. Like that. So here is our mute switch code. We just check and if it's muted, we mute the outputs by setting the volume to zero. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it from right inside of Visual Studio here because I don't want to have to do a, a gigantic full rebuild. We've already written the code which multiplies the final volume value against the uh, input sample in order to produce the output sample. And I talked about that in the last class, uh, the last um, video. While this is building right now, there's one more thing. If you take a right click on this process frame info and go peek to definition, then you can actually see uh, the stuff that's in here. So audio input frame and audio output frame, that's where we're getting our audio data from. We have the number of input and output channels and aux in is the side chain. So if you go back through here, you can take a look. You can see the MIDI information, the host info information. This is all in the aspect documentation as well, but all of that stuff comes in and goes out of this one function. So we've succeeded here, and I can go ahead and load the plugin. It's off by default, so I'll play it. There's the volume control. And of course, the mute control. So while the mute control is working, of course the volume control doesn't do anything. And you can turn the mute control off right there. Okay, so we've now got a volume control and a mute switch here. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be adding two VU meters. One of them is for the left output and the other one is for the right output. And the way that I'll do that is to unload here and I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to jump all the way over to the right here. I'm going to put these VU meters here. So this is VU meter. The name of the meter is going to be L out, which is the left output. The calibration is going to be logarithmic, and I'm going to detect in uh, RMS. We'll have 10 milliseconds for the attack time, and let's make this 100 milliseconds for the release time. And the v variable I'm going to bind it to is going to be left out meter, like that. And you can see that I've got three choice, two choices here, analog or solid. I'm going to choose the solid meter. If you're exporting AAX, you can turn this into a gain reduction meter in Pro Tools. That's that little down meter that you see by the side of the main meters in the mixer view.
So this is set up. I've got a variable connected. I'm going to do the other one much quicker, so I'll do that right now. So right click, V meter. And I will name this one right out meter like that. Set this one to solid V meter as well. Okay, so this one is all set up and ready to go. And now we have the volume control, the mute switch, and now two meters over here. What we need to do is we need to send data to these meters. And it's really, really easy in Aspect to do that. All you do is set that meter variable equal to the output sample value. So this is the left sample, and this is mono in, mono out. In the case of mono in, mono out, what I'm going to say is left out meter equals the value in the output array slot zero, which is the left sample. So I'm just taking the value of the sample and putting it into the meter. The uh, VE meter object will take care of taking the absolute value of that and uh, doing the detection so that it will um, have the ballistics that, that you want. And I will do the same thing with the right out meter. In the case of mono in, mono out, the two meters should move together. So there is um, there's the two, that one. <clears throat> For stereo, mono in, stereo out, or stereo in, stereo out, all we do is say the left out meter is the left out sample, the right out meter is the right out sample which is in slot number one of this array. And I can cut and paste that again down into the stereo stereo code, and that will set up the metering for it. So I'll go ahead back and, uh, and rebuild this with the meters in place right now. Now, if the ballistics don't move the way you like, you can always go back in and change it. You may decide you want to do peak metering, and you may decide you want ultra fast or ultra slow release times. That's up to you, so you kind of set that up uh, how it works best. I'll load the plug in here and then we'll play it. So you can see the meters bouncing around here. Now I'm going to drop the volume and if I drop the volume then these meters should also drop because these are on the output bus. And sure enough they drop all the way down to zero there. Okay, so in this video, we've got our volume knob, our mute button, and we've got two V meters for monitoring signal levels. In the next video, we're going to add a third control. It's going to be a drop down list, and I'm going to show you how to decode the information coming from that and use that. So I'll see you in the next video.